that's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of adventure with Richard Widmark as your host. The Sears Radio Theater will begin... This is Richard Widmark. The Vigilant is a modern surveillance ship. She's equipped with the latest and most sophisticated electronic equipment available. Her mission to monitor all radio transmissions within an undisclosed Far Eastern area for the next 60 days. The Vigilant is en route, due to arrive at her assigned position in 18 hours. She carries a crew of 30, 10 officers, five of them women, and 20 crewmen. She is commanded by Captain Adam Bricker. This routine assignment is about to become one of the most unbelievable odysseys ever told. Captain, I have something I can't quite make out. Well, let's hear what you've got. Now, yeah, listen to this. Seems to be shadowing us, sir. A whale? I don't think so, sir. I've picked up plenty of whales before, and none of them were ever like this. Okay, keep an eye on it, and let me know if it stays with us. Lieutenant, begin evasive maneuvers now. Yes, sir. Come to course 250. Coming about. It's still with us, sir, and it's beginning to close. Andy, find out if there are any subs in the area. Calm one. Calm one. This is the vigilant. We're requesting any known targets in our vicinity. Over. It's really closing fast now, sir. It'll probably surface about 10 degrees off the port bow. Calm one reports no known targets, except a freighter 200 miles north of our position. The satellite shows negative as well. Sir, look. At 11 o'clock. What the? All stop. That's a spaceship. Chief, come here. Sir, what do you make of that? Oh, no. They're firing at us, sir. Is it a laser? Captain, look, the crew. They're frozen. They're disappearing. It's all blue. Everything is blue. Captain. And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of the Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Odyssey of the Vigilant, by David Chomsky. Our stars, Greg Malavy and Meredith McRae. On March 15th, the Vigilant was found floating adrift with no sign of anyone on board. The crew had simply vanished. In the beginning, there were only three of us, and we were no longer aboard the Vigilant. Where we were, where we were going, and what we were going to do were questions without answers. None that I could supply anyway. Chief Stone was the first to come out of whatever state of unconsciousness we were in. Captain Bricker? Lieutenant Kramer? Chief, are you all right? Yes, sir, I'm fine. Captain, do you have any idea where we are? I'd say we were aboard that thing we saw. A spaceship. But how? Look at this room. There are no doors or windows. It's all some kind of metal. As if we were inside a metal A. There's no light source, but there's still light. Where's the rest of the crew? Why did they only take the three of us? They probably just separated us from the crew. Where do you think we're going? I don't know. I never believed in flying saucers before. Chief, what do you make of that noise? Chief? Chief, are you all right? I'm fine. I was just remembering... A... Never mind. It's their propulsion system, I think. But where did this, this UFO come from? Why did it capture us? Where are we going? What are they going to do with us? Don't think about it, Eve. We'll find out when they're ready to tell us. See if you can find a sliding panel or something. There must be a way out. Chief? What? Feel this. It's warm at this spot, but 
but cold everywhere else. You're right. What do you think? Could it be some kind of heating system? No, I don't think so. Well, there's our door. That was a solid wall. It can't just disappear. Instant molecular recombination hasn't been... Captain! Captain, look at that orange glow at the end of the corridor. We're not going to learn anything by staying in here. Let's follow it. It's moving away from us. Is that the thing that brought us here? Captain, it's going into that room. I mean, should we just be following it blindly? I imagine that's what we're supposed to do. But what if it's some kind of trap? You act as if we have a choice. The door. And the floor. It's opening. Chief? I don't know. It looks like some kind of capsule. It's opening. What? Good morning. Please, do not be alarmed. I am Kanarkas, commander of this vessel. I demand to know what's happened to my crew. Please, Captain Bricker, I will answer your questions. But do not take such a harsh tone. I do not appreciate it. How do you know my name? We know all about you. As for your crew, they are all here aboard this vessel, in chambers similar to the one you were in. I can assure you they are unharmed. What do you want with us? Captain, all will be explained in due time. For now, let it suffice to say that you and your crew are being taken to Alvion to participate in a war we are waging against the imperialistic dictator of Zabor. Until we reach Alvion, I must ask you to remain in your holding room. You may follow the tracker out. I want to see my crew. I'm sorry, but that's not possible. Now, I have other duties which require my attention. He's gone. This is unbelievable. I think we're supposed to follow that thing. Didn't look like an alien, did he? What's an alien supposed to look like? Whatever it is we're supposed to do, I don't like it. Neither do I. What do you say we take a long way back? What do you mean? I mean, we try to find the rest of the crew and figure how to get off this thing. Should we make a run for it? On three, we take off to the right, down that other corridor. Ready? One, two, three. follow us, or shoot us with some kind of ray, or just what it would do. But it did nothing. We had eluded it. We had no idea where we were or where the crew might be. As we ran, we became aware that this corridor was more like a shaft. Nothing intersected it, and it didn't seem to lead any place. We finally stopped and leaned against a wall. And when we did, the opposite wall What a pleasant surprise. Please, come in, all of you. I've been watching you on the screen. I was wondering how long it would take before you tried to capture my vessel. I must admit it was sooner than I'd anticipated. This is fantastic. You like it, Chief Stone? Chief? Surely you must be interested to see the control bridge of a, a, a flying saucer, as you might call it. Lieutenant Kramer, you look disappointed. Oh, do I? You are wondering why I don't look different from you. Well, uh, yes. <laughs> it never ceases to amaze me. Always the same question. It's very simple. Ours is a very common life form. It's very functional. But you can rest assured that there are other alien forms of life, less familiar forms, of which you will get your fill sooner or later. But that's another matter. Where is my crew? Ah, you didn't get a chance to see them before you launched your assault on the bridge here. What courage. You have proven yourselves beyond my wildest hopes. I never would have thought you to be so resourceful. What have you done with my crew? In a moment. Stand by to jettison holding pods. 
Understand, Captain, we have found when dealing with your kind that after we have selected the proper team, they become easier to handle when they are permanently isolated from any unnecessary specimens we may have collected with them. Jettison the pods. Pods away. Those unnecessary specimens are my crew. You can't... It's too late, Captain. The pods have been jettisoned. But those were my people. Can't you bring them back? Captain, understand something. Suppose you are doing an experiment with ants. Say you have ten ants, but you need only three for the experiment. It follows you would select the three most suited and rid yourself of the other seven. Isn't that so? But those aren't ants. They're people. Uh, to you, yes. But then it would be the same to the ant. Combat defense open and scanning. Locate stabilizer. Report on anti-mag interference. Damage control reports hit in section 2J. Sustained only moderate damage. Report of what happened? We're under attack. Two hot one type V5. Reverse the angle of deflection and set the cathode pods to full range mode C. Sound a code three alert. I think it would be wise if you three would find something to hold on to. This could get rough. Stand by to fire on my command. Standing by. Here they come. Fire. <laughs> Recalibrate for parsec transfer. A direction on fighter number two. Good. You may be interested to know, Captain, these are Saborian fighters. You might want to study their combat strategy. It may prove useful to you later. A direct hit to section 12B. Half our engine power is gone. Stand by for parsec transfer. Standing by. Fire one more shot at fighter number one, and then on my command, execute parsec transfer. The morning flag is closing. Lock on cathode pod. Locking. He's preparing to fire. Pod ready. He's fired. Fire and parsec transfer. Cancel code three. Cancel. Well, we should be arriving on Aldian shortly. If you will follow the tracker, he will take you to your quarters. followed our mechanical friends, still awed by what we had just witnessed. In a short time, we arrived at our destination. Alveon is a massive planet, and we had a spectacular view of it and its 16 moons as we approached. We landed at a large spaceport, and as we disembarked, we're astonished to see buildings at least six miles high. Lieutenant Kramer, Chief Stone, and myself were led into one of them and locked inside a room that was so large... It had a kind of tram which ran around the perimeter to take it from one side to the other. We had been told we'd be meeting the Grand Proctor of Alvin. We didn't have to wait long. The Grand Proctor was making his entrance. At least a hundred people preceded him into the room and knelt as he arrived. I've never in all my life seen or imagined a more bejeweled person. The gold which covered his body, the diamonds and rubies which flashed and sparkled, almost hid him from our sight. But he was so ugly. I can't describe him in any other way than to call him a creature. He looked nothing like Canarchus, who appeared to be human. This glittering apparition was indescribable. He approached us, and we stood perfectly still. Although I must confess my heart was pounding so fiercely, I thought it might burst. On the planet Alvion, in a huge ceremonial hall, Captain Adam Bricker records another chapter in the astonishing Odyssey of the Vision. This glittering apparition was indescribable. He approached us, 
and we stood perfectly still. Although I must confess my heart was pounding so fiercely, I thought it might burst. Oh, please do not be afraid. I know how I look to you. After greeting so many of your fellow humans, I know what you're thinking. But in any event, welcome to Olvion. Why did you bring us here? Oh, there's no hurry. I'm certain you'd like to get settled first, and then we'll have time for all of your questions. I will not wait. I want to know now. Do not take that tone with me, Captain Bricker, or you will deeply regret it. With all due respect, my crew has been jettisoned into space. I don't know if they're alive or dead, and you expect me to wait? Oh, my. <laughs> I'd forgotten how impatient you people are. Always in a hurry. But then I suppose that's what qualifies you for this work. <laughs> Very well. We shall have our little interview now. What has happened to my crew? They are dead by now. But that is a trivial matter. Let us get to what is important. We are engaged in a war with the Zaborians. You've killed my crew and you consider that trivial? Then you tell me that only your war is important to you? Precisely. I couldn't care less about your war. Oh, you should care. Since you're going to fight it for us. You're quite mistaken, sir. We are not fighting anybody for you. Oh, let me explain something. We have evolved far beyond fighting our own battles. After all, the taking of a life is a very serious matter. What about my crew? I was speaking about Olvian lives, not human lives. Olvians have not known war for 3,000 years, except for a few space pilots like Canarchus, who go into uh, unincorporated sectors of the galaxy. But you see, he's been bred to fight, because sometimes differences do arise between us and some of our neighbors. And when it seems that a full-scale war is the only way to settle them, we simply collect specimens from other planets and have them fight the war for us. <laughs> We've used your people many times in the past, and they've always proven to be excellent warriors. That's incredible. We've caused entire planets to fight amongst themselves. In fact, we've done that on your planet at regular intervals. It keeps you aware, or if you prefer, <laughs> vigilant. On your toes, so to speak, since we never can tell when we'll need to call upon you. You're insane. Not at all. It depends upon how you look at it. We are not going to fight for you. Oh, we shall see. Uh, you will be escorted to your quarters now. If you need anything to make yourselves ready for battle, uh, please let me know and it shall be provided. And now, I have other matters to attend to. We were escorted to a luxurious room where we were served an equally luxurious dinner, which we all found difficult to eat. It was hard to believe what was happening to us. Yet despite it all, I must commend both Lieutenant Eve Kramer and Chief Lyle Stone for their courage and endurance during that difficult time. Neither one showed any sign of weakness. We remained together as a team. What are you thinking, Skipper? I'm just trying to figure this whole thing out. I feel like we're pawns. Well, games are often won or lost by pawns. Why should we fight for these people? We are not going to do any fighting, Chief. Doesn't look to me like we have much choice. Of course we do. We'll just refuse to fight. No. I think what we have to do is find a way to get off this planet, to escape from here. Chief, when we were on the bridge of that spaceship, did it remind you of anything? No. Eve? Hmm. I don't think so. Did you ever see any submarine duty, Chief? Two years. And that was too, too many. Do you remember the control bridge? You can't be thinking that a spaceship and a submarine... The principle is the same. If we could find where they keep those spaceships, I think we could figure out either how to fly one or how to fire its weapons, or even both if we have enough time. I don't know. A submarine is one thing. That's easy enough. But a spaceship... We have no choice. We're just going to walk out of here just like that? You don't see anyone stopping us, do you? Chief, what's the matter? You look strange. What? Oh, no, 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 it's nothing. I, I was just thinking about the spaceships. Captain, listen. Uh, that I sounds like Canarchus. That let's, let's get a little closer. my report in all details. Canarchus, you have done very well. 
Thank you, sir. Uh, from what you've told me, they should prove to win an easy victory over the Zaborian. Never before have humans scored so highly. They are extremely bright and cunning. They are of a good breed. Humans are animals, and they will not fail us. What are the latest scouting reports as to the Zaborian movement on the planetoid? The Zaborians have not yet arrived. However, we have had unconfirmed reports of a convoy moving away from the planet and out of the solar system. Ah, good. Then they already expect defeat. Soon we will have conquered another race. This battle will be the turning point. Victory is within our grasp. out into the street, which was completely deserted, although it was broad daylight. We figured these people were nocturnal. It was a short trip to where we had landed, and there we found several unguarded spaceships sitting on the pads. We entered the first one we came to. We can't do this. It's impossible. Oh, don't be so pessimistic, Lyle. We have to find out how to switch on the main power. This is the power panel. These switches here. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay, go ahead. That's it. Captain, something's flashing here. Chief, shut it off quickly. What do you think that was? An overload or some kind of overheating. But that's definitely the power... Captain Bricker. Chief. We were told to stay in your quarters. Chief, throw the switches. Step away. We are not going back with you. I said move away from there. Leave us alone or I'll push this red button. You blow up everything for a thousand miles. You leave me no choice. Men, fire! stunned by some sort of ray. It felt as if we'd been hit by a brick wall. When we came to, it was evening, and we were in the Grand Proctor's chambers. He was talking about something we couldn't quite understand. Not at first, anyway. You fools! Who do you think you are to take advantage of our hospitality? You are a lower form of life. You exist because we allow you to. Do you think you can disrupt us like that? This will not be tolerated. Who do you think you are? Chief, what gives you the right? You've always been a disgusting parasite, leeching off other people. Drain you! What are you doing to him? Let him go! Stop it! Stop it, you! Kill him! Chief. Chief. Lyle. He was right. What he said about you was right. Careful. I can do the same to you. Huh. See? How do you feel? I'm okay. Are you sure? Yes, really. I have no time for any more of these interruptions, so listen closely. I went to great lengths to bring you here. It was not a simple matter. We are in a desperate struggle with Zabor, and it is imperative that all we on win. We must have your complete cooperation. Then why don't you ask us instead of kidnapping us? Ask you? Don't be ridiculous. You will fight because it is your nature and because we tell you to fight. We fight only when we want to fight and only when there's no other alternative. Oh, yes, that's correct. I forgot you need a reason to fight. Very well. <laughs> you are fighting to keep men free, to be able to think as you please and to, um, to defeat the imperialistic dictator of Zabor. We are not fighting your battle. You fight it. You are very stubborn. Very stubborn. Uh, look out the window at the sky. Now, over there, you can see the Orion Nebula. One of the stars in that group has exploded. Once a race of people very similar to you humans lived on a planet that circled that star. They refused to do what we asked them, and so we caused their sun to explode, to become a supernova. The point is, unless you fight for us, we'll do the same thing to your planet. Cause your sun to explode. Now, why don't you go back to your quarters and think that over? Do you really think you could do that, Adam? Probably. How do you feel, Chief? I'm all right. My hands and feet are a little numb, but I'm okay. But what'll they do to us if, if we don't fight? 
Either kill us now or send us back and let us die along with everyone else. But maybe if we don't fight, the Zaborians will win and, and, and they'll help us. And maybe the Zaborians are worse. I don't think we have much choice. I, uh... I wasn't going to tell you this, but... It's time we knew. What? Because of what's happened, I, I think you'll believe me. I know that they're capable of destroying us or anyone else they wish to. I know because I was one of the space pilots who escaped from the planet that circled the sun in the Orion Nebula, the planet they destroyed. I managed to escape with 100 men, women, and children, and we landed on your planet. You are both direct descendants of my people. Descendants? It sounds incredible, I know, but it's true. And now you must help me. Just as it has been my duty, it is now your duty to destroy the Alveon forces and liberate the planets which the Alveons abuse. I know you. I, I can't believe... Uh, are we like you? Yes. You have evolved from what I am and from what my people once were. The blood which flows in you had its beginnings in me. I have said enough. We must rest. Could it be true? At first, I, I tried to dismiss what the chief said as some kind of delusion brought about by the, by the torture he'd undergone. And yet something inside me kept me from discounting his fantastic story. We all had a troubled rest, fearful of the big battle that lay somewhere just ahead when we would meet the Zaborians and clash in Mortal Kombat. Richard Widmark again, and here's the concluding act of The Odyssey of the Vigilant. The next day, we were escorted to a spaceship and flown to a small planet in a distant solar system. No one spoke to us, and all our questions went unanswered. We assumed we were being taken to the battlefield, and we were right. The ship touched down, raising a small cloud of black dust. We quickly disembarked, and were led a safe distance away as another ship landed. This planet looked very much like home. There were trees and grass, and in the distance I could hear birds calling. It was very different from Alveon, which seemed like a concrete island surrounded by sand compared to this beautiful jewel. It hardly seemed the place for a battle, but the Grand Proctor stepped out of the second ship and quickly put an end to that thought. Ah, I hope we are all feeling well this morning. Today is the appointed day, a day that will go down in history. And now, let us begin. First of all, I am happy to announce that we have met with the Zaborians and laid down the rules. Rules? You never used rules before. We are a very civilized people. There are always rules. As to the size of the armies, we've been allowed to use all three humans, and we have allowed them to use seven Zaborian warriors. Seven? That doesn't seem fair. We gave you a battleground you are familiar with. What is it that we're supposed to do? It's very simple. You are to kill them. The first side to eliminate the other is the victor. How are we supposed to do that? We have no weapons. We are not allowed to offer you any assistance. Both teams are restricted to weapons native to this planet. You mean we have to build our own weapons? Yes, that is correct. And now it grows late. The Zaborians are already here. I suggest you quickly go about fashioning your weapons. And remember, we will be watching you. If you fail and cause us to lose this battle, we will destroy your home planet. I sincerely hope you succeed. The Grand Proctor and his escort left. They entered this spaceship and were quickly gone. We were alone, waiting. Have you thought about what I told you last night? Yes, I have. And what do you think? I'm still not sure. You must admit it's difficult to believe. I would have thought all of this difficult to believe, yet it's real. But to think that we are aliens... No, you are not alien. You are my descendants. You have evolved slightly and adapted slightly, but you can't run away from who and what you are. But none of that matters now. We must fight the Zaborians and defeat them. Or else they will defeat us. The Chief's right. 
What do we do? We need weapons. Yes. That smell in the air. Are you aware of it? Yes. What is it? Could it be the enemy? Listen. Listen, what, what's that? Chief, we must get out of this open field. Chief, I've been hit. An arrow. My leg. I've got to pull it out. Lieutenant, take off your scarf and use it as a tourniquet. Okay. Hold still. Make it in one try. Here goes. It's out. Captain, over there. Look, that must be them. Come on. We've got to get out of here. Help me up. Look, Adam, there are caves up there. Give me a hand with the chief. Keep that fire going, Lieutenant. It seems to be keeping them away. Chief, I'm going to remove the tank. We've got to see how bad that leg is. Dogs that can make bows and shoot arrows? Instead of treating me, you should be building your weapons. Let me take care of your leg first. Lieutenant, use some of those branches for bows and see if you can find some sort of vine for the drawstring. Yes, sir. I'll do what I can. It's still bleeding. Must have clipped an artery. Let me put this tourniquet back. After we win, I'm sure the Albions will fix you up as good as new. No, the Albions believe that only the strong should survive. They have no medicine. I'm still not sure I can believe this story of yours. I've been trying to mark it up as a delusion caused by your, by your torture. It's not any delusion. It's true. You are my children. My children's children's children. Stretching back almost 4,000 years. Now, I may die, but you mustn't let my dream die with me. For if that lives, then I live with it. It, it was so long ago. It was beautiful. Similar to this planet, but even more beautiful. Where it always existed peacefully. Then one day the Alveons arrived. It was just before the end when I learned that they were planning to destroy our son because we had become rebellious. That I stole a spaceship and captained it along with 100 men, women, and children to your planet. I don't know where all the other people are. They could even be dead. But I do know the Alveons must be stopped. It is something we have all vowed. And now you must vow it too. Captain, Captain, here they come. Are the weapons ready? Yes, here, take one. They can't get us here in the cave. Just stay down. Now let's see how well these work. Good shot, you hit one. Put your arrows in the fire and shoot at them. Try and scare them off. It's working, Captain. It's working, they're running. They're gone. Let's go out and look at our enemy. I think they went over this way. I'm right behind. Look at that. It's... 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 It's not a dog and... And it's not a man. It has hands and arms, but... But its body and head are just like a dog. We're not going to be able to hide from them. It's so big. It's huge. Oh, look at those teeth. We'd never win it hand to hand. Come on, let's get back to the chief. But when we got back to the cave, the chief was gone. We knew he couldn't get very far. He was losing a lot of blood. We caught up with him on the other side of the hill. He was feverishly digging a hole. There he is. What's he doing? Come on. Chief, what are you doing? I figured it out. I know how to get them. What are you talking about? I know how to kill the Zaborians. We can't. You should have seen them. It doesn't matter. We'll set a trap. That may finish this hole. It only has to be a little deeper. But what kind of trap? There are still six of them. This is just a little hole. It's going to be a landmine. A landmine? I don't understand, Chief. Listen to me. Do you remember that odor we smelled before? Of course. Do you smell it now? That's the enemy. It's those dogmen. No, that's sulfur. This soil, look, it's full of potassium nitrate. I brought some coals from the fire. Chief, we have to get back to the cave. They're coming. Wait, don't you see? That's gunpowder. You mean you're making gunpowder? That's right. Then all we have to do is pile rocks and stones on top of it. And we have a landmine. Of course. We'll have to work quickly. Start putting the stones on. 
Well, how do we set it off? With this piece of coal. Wrap it in my shirt and swing it so it catches fire. When they come near it, throw the burning shirt. That should set it off. Chief, look out. Behind you. Get away. Move away from the line. Come on, Eve. Come on. There's nothing we can do. we got to help him. We've got to get back. Come on. He did it. He killed one of them. My God, they're running after him. He's leading them to the mine. They're on him. We <laughs> tear him to bits. Swing the shirt. Swing the shirt. Throw it now. That's it. It's finished. Even better than we expected. What happens to us now? Well, that is entirely up to you. We have no further need of you. You may be returned to your home planet, or if you wish, you may stay here and live out your lives on this little insignificant planet. The choice is entirely yours. Captain? We'll stay here. Very well, as you desire. I wish you well. We were happy to accept this planet with its one moon and one sun as our new home. We decided to name it after the planet which had circled the sun the Albions had destroyed. The planet that the chief, our ancestor, called home. And so we named this planet Earth. I hope it can be said someday that Adam Bricker and Eve Kramer had many children on this Earth. The Odyssey of the Vigilant was written by David Chomsky, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Richard Widmark. Our stars were Greg Malavy and Meredith McRae. Also heard were Joe Miros, Marvin Miller, Jack Crucian, Byron Kane, and Vance Colby. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. Associate Director of Sears Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollison. Joanne Thompson is Production Supervisor. And the recording engineers are Joe Wachter and Hal McDonald. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI.